Greasy, bespectacled now, throwing to Nat Moore. That made it Miami 7 to nothing early in the first quarter. And then Mr. Greasy came right back. Different target. That snapped more. That's three touchdowns. You just passed the Duriel Harris touchdown. And right here is four. Nat Moore again. Three on the day. Ten on the season. Leading all receivers. What a day for Greasy. And now a new target. The youngster from Cal Poly, Gary Davis. That was touchdown number five on the day. And now... An unlikely target for Greasy, the great blocking tight end, Andre Tillman, number 87. And Miami crushed St. Louis unexpectedly. With Buddy Ryan, you can always expect surprises, but oddly enough, in the fourth quarter, it was Buddy's Eagles who were ambushed by the Dolphins. Dan Marino throwing for over 300 yards for the first time this season, rallied the Dolphins twice in the final five minutes to force overtime. There, ironically, the Eagles' kicking game, so precise in preseason, was suddenly grounded. Eagles 33, low snap, fielded, and somehow kicked away off the ground, rolling across the 50, the 45, the 40, and a penalty flies way back at the 20-yard line. I guess you can't kick that. Moments later, Pete Stoyanovich sent the birds packing, and Miami got sweet revenge. Here it is. It's spotted. The kick is away, and the kick is... Happy Thanksgiving. Are you ready to talk some football? We've got some good games this week. Can't wait to see how they play out. Let's talk a little bit about last week. I went 8-6. and six. Not great, but not the disaster that was two weeks ago. So I guess we'll, we'll live with that. Uh, brings my overall totals up to 109. 67 and 1. Not a bad record, but could could stand some improving. Like to try to get another couple of double digit uh, weekends, uh, double digit win weekends. So let's look at uh, the, the games that we've got going on for uh, this week. 1230 today, and I'm going to have a hard time getting this video up by then, but we'll see. Um, at 12.30, we've got the Bears at the Lions. I'm picking the Bears. I think that the Bear defense is good enough to handle this Lion offense that's going to be probably playing without Matthew Stafford. In fact, what I read uh, the, other, the other day was that they're planning on kind of pulling uh, Cam Newton and maybe closing up his season for the rest of the year. And they probably should because at 3-7-1, and one, they're not doing anything this year. There's no sense of letting him get beat up anymore. Let him heal and then see what how he does going into next year. As far as Bears are concerned, they're 5-6. and six. I'm speculating they'll be six and six after today that still keeps them in the hunt uh for a playoff spot can they do it uh, you know i don't know i i think I, I don't expect them to be in the playoffs i think that they need to to look at trying to pick up a a, a better quarterback in the off season and hope that that window because i've been beating this like a drum but that Bears defense is so good that uh, they really and they you're only going to have a window of opportunity that you know those players aren't all going to stick keep sticking around especially if they're not getting anywhere so they need to make a move and that move means picking up I think a veteran quarterback because I don't think that they lack that much into making the jump from being a good team to an excellent team. And um, so, like, for example, I read the other day that uh, Philip Rivers may not be in San Diego next year. That's the case. The Bears maybe need to make a play for him. Or talk to the Falcons, see if they're, they're willing to get rid of uh, trade Matt Ryan 
They need to do something. There are quarterbacks out there that uh, that are better than Mitch Trubisky, and they, they need to try to find one. All right. The uh, late afternoon game today is the uh, Bills and the Cowboys. And I'm noticing as I'm starting this, I haven't marked either one. Um, because this, to me, is one of the toughest games of the weekend. I am going to go with the Cowboys, but not by much. Um, so a couple things to think about as far as the Cowboys are concerned, the Cowboys-Bills game. Um, Cowboys sitting at 6-5. and five. Jerry Jones has been very public about his frustration with uh, Jason Garrett as coach. So you have to look at the Cowboys and say, will they rally? And you need to ask, are they going to rally around uh, Jason Garrett and and start playing for him or not? And, you know, I, I don't know enough about the Cowboys to know how they feel about Jason Garrett. Uh, but that, that needs to happen. They need to step up and play. Now, it, it, and to me, the reason why I give them the edge, one, they're at home. Two, there's, you know, I think they're, Dak Prescott's playing at a higher level than Josh Allen. Um, off the top of my head, I couldn't even name the Bills running back. So, I think they're getting better play out of some of their skill players like Prescott and Elliott. But we'll see. We'll see. They need to, this would be, but they need to understand they don't need to sleep on the, the this Bills team. This Bills team plays excellent defense. And if that Bills defense shows up today, it's going to be a war of attrition for the Cowboys. They're going to have to, they're going to have to uh, really fight to get the victory. Because that Bills defense, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back, uh, do a YouTube search on on the Patriots-Bills game from earlier in this year and just watch how hard the defense was popping Patriot players. I mean, they were, they were getting after it. They, if they do that today... This could easily go the other way. So, but right now I'm calling Cowboys over the Bills by maybe that much. <laughs> um, Saints at Falcons. Falcons have been hot, but I think the Saints are maybe the best team in football. Oh boy, that, that sounded convincing. I, I just. The Saints have made me believers this year because of the way they played without Breeze. They really stepped up and and uh, played well without him. I think they're better with him, and so yeah, I can't I can't call the Falcons over the Saints. But this again, this may not be that easy of a ball game for the Saints either. Um, the Titans at Colts. I hadn't marked that one, I think. All right. So, Titans and Colts. We're going to go with the Colts. Um, I think I like Brisket as a game manager. Um, they're playing at home. This is going to be a tough game for them as well because I think the Titans are playing better with... Um, Tannehill at quarterback, but I think the Colts get it done as long as it doesn't come down to field goals. Man, Vinatieri, I feel so terrible for him. Such a great kicker, but this has not been a good year. So the Colts do need to jump out on the Titans, but but uh, I, I think they'll take care of business at home. Oh, this next game, wow. We're talking 49ers at Ravens. Um, this, this should be a real slobber knocker. These are two red hot teams. 
the Ravens playing an unorthodox um, offense. I'm going with the Ravens mainly because it's at home. Uh, I just don't know if the 49ers have been as consistently good as the Ravens. If the Ravens get out ahead of you, they're they're going to be tough to catch. Um, yeah, so I'm going with the Ravens, but but that's a that's going to be a this game could shape up to be a classic. Um, so let me say this though about about where the Ravens are. Um, they do worry me just because watching them a little bit Monday night. I didn't watch the whole whole uh, massacre, but uh, watching them play Monday night, it just scares me watching uh, Lamar Jackson take off running as much as he does. I just don't know how well a quarterback is going to hold up running that much in the NFL. Um, and then if he gets hurt, what do you do? Is the quarterback that <laughs> that you've got behind him as a, anywhere near as, a, as athletic as Lamar Jackson? And I, now, so... Hear, hear this. I was having a conversation with another fellow in the vinyl community who is a football fan, and he was talking about, we were talking about Colin Kaepernick. And politics aside, whether we're not going to get into all that, where would he fit best in the NFL? My feeling is. If I were the Ravens, I would try to see if I could sign Kaepernick. One, because his running would make him... You wouldn't have... I wouldn't think that you would have to alter the offense as much if you had Kaepernick as a backup. And if Lamar Jackson, heaven forbid, got hurt. We don't we're not wishing that, but you just have to take that into consideration when you run your quarterback that much. The other thing that signing Kaepernick would do, what I would consider if I were a uh, if I were their coach or GM, the potential of running a wildcat with with Jackson and Kaepernick. <clears throat> not that you'd want to do it long term. But if you could keep it under wraps and then spring it on somebody in the playoffs, let's say the Patriots, um, it could be effective. And so, you know, I'm just saying, just putting it out there, that would be my thoughts. If you're the Ravens, maybe you consider signing Kaepernick if he's not doing foolish things like wearing a Kunte Kente shirt. I don't care where your politics are at. Don't care what you believe, but can we all universally agree that wearing a Kunte Kente shirt when you're trying to get into back into the NFL is about as stupid as stupid gets? I mean, all right. So, but still, I, I think that would be one of the fascinating uh, places that, that Kaepernick could potentially go would be... Uh, to to Baltimore. Next up, Jets at Bengals. Uh, yeah, Bengals are terrible. Uh, I haven't seen anything to really suggest anything different. And the Jets have really improved over the last several weeks. That run defense is no joke. Yeah, so that wasn't a, that wasn't a hard pick. Jets over Bengals. Browns at Steelers. The Steelers are really struggling, and I think it's mainly they're feeling the they're good enough where sometimes they can get around the quarterback play, but then sometimes they can't. And the Browns looked a lot better against mm -hmm. the Dolphins. They're finally getting some of their uh, key players involved. I'm actually picking the Browns over the Steelers in Pittsburgh. Uh, Eagles at Dolphins. Dolphins have been playing above their heads quite a bit. 
as far as getting two wins and 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 playing closer to some teams than, than we thought they would. Uh, the Eagles are inconsistent. They're not world beaters. Uh, so this may be a closer game than what we might think just looking at it off the off of the schedule. But um, I'm taking the Eagles. I, I yeah, they've just I'm not confidently. But uh, I am taking the Eagles. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. I like this Dolphins team. I'm rooting for them as much as I can. But uh, I just don't know that. I think sometimes the talent level is at, at a point where, you know, unless you catch a team sleeping, you're not going to beat them. We, we got lucky. We caught the Colts when, without Jacoby Brissett and and played an outstanding football game, but we also caught some breaks. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think I think you have to you have to pick the Eagles over the Dolphins. Um, Redskins at Panthers. Redskins actually won a game won another game, but uh, who did they play last week? Uh, Redskins. Oh, yeah, they beat the Lions. Um, again, the Lions are struggling, so they've beaten the Dolphins when, in a season when we're tanking. They've beaten the Lions without uh, Matthew Stafford. You know, I think the Panthers are are a good team. There's not that much drop off from quarterback to quarterback with the Panthers. So I'm taking the Panthers. Packers at Giants. Uh, yeah, the Giants are terrible too. So uh, Packers look, looked uh, kind of rough last Sunday, but they were playing the Red Hot 49ers this year. This week, they're just yeah, they're not going to lose on the road this week. Packers over the Giants. We got the Buccaneers at the Jaguars. Uh, I like the Jaguars. Uh, it's pretty evenly matched game, I think, but um, Jaguars at home, you know, and 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 the Buccaneers are just too inconsistent for me. Rams at Cardinals. I think the Rams bounce back this week, and and uh, Cardinals may give them a little bit of a fight. Uh, Murray seems to be doing better than doing pretty decent for his rookie year. So, but I, I don't think they have enough firepower to keep up with the Rams. Um, Raiders at Chiefs. Yeah, the Chiefs. They they know they need to take care of business. And the Raiders are much improved, but they're not that. The, the Chiefs are going to get it done this week. I'm confident of that. Uh, Chargers at Broncos. There are several games I forgot to mark before I started this video. So as we look at the Chargers at Broncos, let me slide over here. Take a look at the records. The Chargers one of those teams. So, yeah, all right. So we got the Chargers at four and seven. Broncos at three and eight. This is in Denver. Um, Broncos. Well, there's not much difference. They both. There's only one point difference between what they've allowed. The defenses have allowed. Broncos have a, a lot less points. Man, that's tough. I almost. You know what? I'm going to take the Chargers. Maybe they'll win a game for me. It just seems like when the Chargers are one of those teams I can never get right. Um, so, if they lose, well, then they lose. 
they won't. Maybe I jinxed them. I can take solace in that. It just, just a tough, tough team to get a grip on. They should be so much better than what they are, and it's hard to figure out why they're not. All right, so Patriots at Texans. Um, Patriots. Until you... I, I know there's not as good as they used to be on on offense, but that defense is probably underrated. Uh, they, they do. When you look back at what they did in the um, playoffs last year, I mean, they just shut down the Chiefs and the Rams. And as you look now, well, yeah, they've easily got the the best defense in the East, AFC East, at one allowing 117 points. Even the Bills, they're the Bills have got a great defense that sometimes gets hung up by the offense. I think, but. Um, yeah, they're 50 points ahead of the, the Bills, and the Bills have a good defense. So when you look at points allowed, they're clearly the best in the AFC East, as much as that pains me to to say it. Uh, so, yeah, Patriots. Vikings at Seahawks. Uh, I just like the Seahawks here, I think. Let's look at their records. So the the Vikings are eight and three. Uh, Seahawks are nine and two. It's in Seattle. It'll be a tough game. It'll be a worthwhile game to have on Monday night. But um, yeah, I like the Seahawks here. Uh, just think Russell Wilson um, is having a great year, and uh, so. I expect the Seahawks to win that. So there we go. That's the picks for this week. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, for me and for my little turkeys, I got one sitting right over here. Let's see if I can get it. Hey, hey, Aretha. Yeah, Jake's probably in the back room laying down sleeping on the bed. Lazy butt. So anyway... Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you soon.